Alright, I want to go over these steps of designing and writing a PLC program. You need to follow these steps and in this order. Number one, you've got to identify the task. You identify the task. You need to know what it is that you want this program to do. It doesn't make sense to start working on something and you have no idea what you want to accomplish. Okay? So you need to identify the task. Maybe you want to do a start-stop control with some safety switches. Maybe a forward-reverse system. Maybe you've got some process control. But you have steps that need to take place. Okay? And in looking at that task, you're going to come up with an idea of what type of hardware you need to accomplish that task. I'll need a PLC with 10 inputs. I'll need a PLC with 20 inputs, 15 DC outputs, 15 relay outputs, whatever the case may be. Your task will drive your hardware. Okay? Your next step is to identify the hardware. Define it. You've got to define your hardware. Put that into your program as to what hardware you're going to be using. Okay? In your case of your PLCs that you've got for the class, you're going to select the Nano Micro IC200 UDR001. Oh, yeah. Okay? If you're in the class, you're an IC200 UDR005. Okay? The 001, you've got eight inputs and six relay outputs. Okay? Eight and six, it's called a 14 point PLC. Eight inputs, six outputs. 14 point PLC. So you have to define the hardware. You've got to tell the computer what type of hardware this is going to be going into. All right? Your next step is to define your I.O. Define the inputs and outputs. What is connected to pin 1? What is connected to pin 2? What is connected to pin 3? All of those inputs and all of your outputs. You need to do that before you start programming. Before you do anything, define your I.O. We're going to be going over all of these steps, but you need to know where we're going first. Part of the I.O. is if you're going to be using timers, you define your timers. If you're going to be using counters, you define your counters. If you're going to be using memory storage, you define those areas also. All of that goes into the, the input-output. I.O. stands for input-output. You want to define all of that right up at the beginning. Now if you forget about something you can come back later and add it in but if you want to properly program this set up your structure so that this is done before you start writing the program. Okay? Your next step is to write the program itself. Looking at what the task is you write your program to accomplish that task. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you look at your task and you write your program to accomplish that task using the hardware and the defined I.O. Can you see if you get this out of order, if you write your program up here, then you come back and define this, it's going to be a mess to try and sort out. Okay. Now you have your program written. What do we do next? <laughs> Download it into the PLC and test it. Okay? Download goes from the PC and stores that program into the PLC and makes it live so you can test it out. Okay? You're doing your design up here on the PC. Once you do your design, you can download and test and monitor what's going on inside the PLC and make your changes based on that. And one final item out there, once you get all done, you got to do number six. Number six. Then you get to sit back and collect the big bucks. 
Oh, it's not even on there. There we go. Right there. Get it in there. Got to get it in there, right? Collect the big bucks. Okay. <laughs> Had one of my students come by here three years after being out of the program. He's doing PLC programming, making 54 bucks an hour. Okay. What's that? No. No, he works over here in one of the local manufacturing cities local close by here. $54 an hour. $54 an hour.